Last year, the media tried to tell us it was the summer of the shark. Summer of the shark. Summer of the shark. The summer of the shark. But they were just trying to scare us to boost their ratings. So what's the real deal? Miami Seaquarium shark expert Chris Plant set the record straight. Is this the summer of the shark? In 2001, there was a sudden increase in the number of shark attacks during summer in Florida. Experts argued it might be because of changing currents, dwindling food supplies, the recent rise in shark feeding tourist operations, or any other external cause. Can mathematics help us to explain this observation? The answer is yes, and it can be explained using something called a statistical distribution. Things that seem random and unpredictable if viewed in isolation often turn out to be lawful and predictable when viewed in aggregate. This is the underlying principle of a statistical distribution. Before we try to explain the maths behind the summer of the shark, let us try to understand a much simpler problem that involves tossing or flipping a coin five times. The result, as you expect, is either a head or a tail. However, we are interested in knowing what are the chances of getting exactly three heads if we flip a coin five times. Now this is a problem of probability and by definition, it requires us to count all the possible outcomes of getting exactly three heads and further divide it with total number of possible outcomes of five heads. Since a coin toss has only two possible outcomes and assuming the coin is fair or unbiased, we can safely say there is a 50-50 chance of getting either a head or a tail. In other words, the probability of each outcome is half. Given that each coin toss does not affect the next one, we can safely say they are independent events. Therefore, the number of possible outcomes of several independent events is the product of the number of possible outcomes of each event individually. So, for two coin tosses, the number of possible outcomes is 2 into 2, 4. Similarly, for five coin tosses, we will have 2 to the power 5, 32 outcomes. Now, how many of them contain exactly three heads? Let us see by listing all the 32 outcomes. You can have 5 heads in a row or 4 heads and 1 tail or 3 heads then 1 tail and followed by 1 head. Basically you get the idea to write the other outcomes. We are only interested in outcomes which have exactly 3 heads and we can see from here that there are 10 possible ways to get it. Thus the probability simply is 10 by 32 or 5 by 16. Knowing that this approach takes time, we know it will be challenging to find what are the chances of getting 31 heads if we flip a coin 50 times. Or if this example becomes too unrealistic or bookish, let us take another example. What are the chances that an ecologist would catch 31 female frogs out of 50 total frogs if the gender ratio in a pond were actually 50-50? It turns out statistical distribution can make our lives easier. And there exists a formula called binomial distribution that can help us to directly calculate the probabilities of these outcomes. The probability of m successes here, number of getting exactly three heads, in n trials here, number of coin flips, when the probability of outcome of interest is p, is given by this formula. You might complain about the complexity of this expression, but it saves us the pain of writing 32 coin toss outcomes or every possibility for catching 50 frogs in a supposedly gender neutral pond and then counting how many of them give you 31 female frogs. For example, let us use this distribution to calculate the probability of getting exactly 3 heads in 5 flips. We have n equal to 5 and m equal to 3 and odds of getting heads is p equal to half. Therefore, the probability here is 10 by 32 or 5 by 16 or 31 percent which is same as before. As far as the problem of catching 31 female frogs out of 50 frogs, the answer is 2.7%. Now, coming to the sudden surge in shark attacks phenomena, we need to understand that unpredictable events such as shark attacks do not happen at regular intervals but tend to occur in random clusters. This means there are bound to be periods with an above average number of events as well as periods with a below the average or even no events at all. We can further quantify this bursty behavior using Poisson distribution. It is used to calculate the chance that a particular time period will exhibit an abnormally large number of events 
or that it will exhibit no events at all. The chance of exactly k events occurring is lambda to the power k divided by k factorial times e to the power minus lambda where k can take values 0, 1, 2 and so on. Here the Greek letter lambda represents average number of events and e to the power minus lambda is the good old exponential function. Now let us use this formula to calculate the shark attacks or let's say to analyze the summer of the shark events. Assuming there are two average shark attacks per summer then the probability of having six shark attacks next summer is obtained by plugging in lambda equal to 2 and k equal to 6 into the Poisson formula and it gives probability of 6 attacks as 1%. This means that 6 shark attacks are highly unlikely to happen in one year, although this would happen once every 80 years. Similarly, the probability of having a summer without any shark attacks can also be obtained by simply putting lambda equal to 2 and k equal to 0 which gives us a probability of 13%. Hence we expect a sharkless summer every 7 or 8 years. Poisson distribution is used to model radioactive decay, ecological studies of wildlife population and traffic flow on the internet etc. We talked about two distributions and they might seem completely different to each other. But it turns out that one can recover the Poisson distribution when the number of trials are large, that is n tends to infinity, but the probability of an event is rare, that is p tends to zero. For example, the events like shark attacks which have extremely rare probability, as well as the product np is constant. In that case, one can approximate binomial distribution as Poisson distribution. The famous bell curve, also called the normal or Gaussian distribution, is also a special case of binomial distribution. It happens when the sample size is large. The mean and standard deviations can be visually understood by the bell curve, which is symmetrical. The most common values are near the mean and less common values are farther from it. And the standard deviation marks the distance from the mean to the inflection point. Normal distribution is used in a variety of situations. For example, insurance companies always know with great accuracy how many of their customers will die each year. They just don't know who are the unlucky ones will be, since the distribution does not tell anything about the individual data points. Another example can be the height of adults. Our height depends on many factors such as genetics, biochemistry, nutrition and environment. Consequently, when viewed in aggregate, the heights of adults in men and women also follow a normal distribution. The normal distribution arises whenever a large number of mildly random effects of similar size all acting independently are added together. And many things involved are like that, but not everything. The lens of probability and statistics provide a powerful tool to filter some useful information through the vast amount of data in the present world. Learning it can provide an additional layer of protection against the assault of the misinformation age.